Hey everybody, it's Feng here again with this week's uh, Design Cinema and I just want to say a thanks to all those who wrote in with positive comments, questions and all the um, good feedback because that does help me uh, decide what we work on next and also keeps the uh, energy going so it doesn't feel like uh, you know uh, these things are going to waste so I'm, I'm happy that these are uh, helping a lot of people out there and hopefully you guys are learning something from it so alright let's get started with this week's uh, uh, tutorial uh, Again, I don't really have too much time to do these live to paint them, but hopefully uh, by you guys watching just the layers turning on and off, you guys will see that at least the, the steps it takes to uh, do these paintings. But uh, one of these days, I'll see if I could pre-record some kind of live event uh, and then play it back on these videos. But we most likely have to speed it up because again, even my fastest tutorials takes about an hour to do. Um, that will equal to about 10 you know, YouTube videos, which is quite long. So I try to keep these under three, four um, segments on YouTube. Otherwise, it gets too much uh, files to manage. Uh, but in any case, uh, so this image, here is a demo that I actually did in class for our certificate course. This is not for our full-time diploma, um, which we actually show some pretty advanced stuff. We show some very basic stuff, then we also show some advanced stuff because the uh, majority of students taking these courses are, are working professionals. Um, and for this week, I want to show you guys something that's almost from production. This is very similar to the kind of work I was doing on the uh, on the movie Transformers, in which we're working with live plates and inserting in um, these giant, huge robots. So I want to show you guys as well. Uh, uh, you know, this is very, very similar to the way we did the stuff on the, on the real film, on the Transformers movie. Uh, so I can show you, uh, you know, the steps that you took to achieve this kind of look. Uh, kind of, uh, I just zoom in here so you can see, uh, somewhat photorealistic. Um, uh, rendering right because and that to be done very very quick because uh, when we first started on the film uh, it was very very early on and we had to basically design the scenes not even the robots yet you know the robots will come later once the scenes are done once the film looks cool once we have the action sequences and then we can start refining the actual designs of the robots themselves so this is one of those paintings this is a production painting that tries to sell the look of the film you know in this case maybe we're working on Transformers 3 4 whatever it could be um, and then this is the kind of stuff that uh, make a lot of people understand what you're trying to do, right? Because, you know, try to describe a film like Transformers is very tricky. You know, people can't see in their heads, uh, especially producers and those um, you know, people that are not in the creative industry. You're trying to say, like, oh, my movie has big robots and they're fighting on the street, blah, blah, blah. Well, the painting like this is very easy to uh, get that point across. So um, let me uh, shut off some of these layers. So uh, we'll go through one by one how this stuff gets made. So. This is a plate, you know, again, uh, some of my past tutorials have this as well. So, you know, unlike last week, which in which everything was painted raw, this one we actually start with a photo plate. This picture is, just, is quite interesting, actually. This photo is a uh, picture taken in Shanghai, but not by me, by, by uh, a very good uh, 3D artist uh, named Jeremy Cook, uh, who, you know, so strangely, you know, for this, uh, for this demo, he actually worked at Industrial Light and Magic and uh, also at Blur Studio, which I used to work at a long time ago. But while, uh, while I, uh, I am, he actually built a bunch of the robots that you see in the actual Transformers film, like Megatron and a um, bunch, bunch of those robots in there. So it's quite weird that uh, there's a strange connection. But anyways, this is an image that he took. So just in case uh, Jeremy is watching, I'm getting him full credit for the, uh, the picture here. So it's a Shanghai on a very foggy day. If you've ever been to Shanghai, this is pretty much what it looks like uh, majority of the time. Uh, pretty hazy because it's a huge metropolitan city, uh, lots of traffic, but it's great. It's very, very good for a um, for a photo plate because because of the haze and this kind of uh, soft atmosphere, it's very easy to add stuff in. And also gives you this very nice, uh, let me make my layer here so I could put my notes. It gives you these areas of nice little hot highlights, like these little dings that it's getting from the sun. It's very nice. The sense uh, behind us uh, to the to the actually yeah behind us to the left, yeah you can see from the shadows. Right? It's making this kind of form, so it's very nice for these you know really nice hot bounce lights to come through. Right, you can see right there these hot atmosphere lights. So uh, this photo plate is quite good. I actually use this plate a lot for doing demos because I like the lighting in this scene. We have some very nice shadows that's coming across, and we have some nice highlights, and that gives us uh, a basically a nice spectrum of value to work with. All right, so let's uh, let's start turning on some of these layers. So we'll start with robot number one. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to shut some stuff, uh, shut some layers off before we even get to this guy here. Okay, so these layers. Let's turn this on. Turn this off for a second here, in which we deal with atmosphere. So before we even paint any of the robots, we want to clean up the plate slightly so it's not so raw, right? Here's the uh, raw plate you can see here. It's got a warm color tone, which is not bad, uh, but for this scene, because I'm dealing with some robots, we want to cool it off a little bit. The robots in general perceive as metal, so I want to cool down the scene. So this, this layer here cools these things down. So you can see here's the plate with some 
uh, color adjustments added in. And I also painted some stuff out that I don't want in this scene. You'll see that uh, over here, this will come later. All right, here's the raw plate. Here's some of those things painted out because they conflict with my robot, which you'll see later. Uh, right here, see here. See, if I turn that layer off and here's my robot, here's crotch area, his two legs, these light poles are quite distracting. You can see, they go right through my shape. So what I do is I, I remove them in the original plate. So that way it gives a nice breathing room and makes these uh, forms read. Without, with these light poles in a way, it's quite, whoops, wrong layer. It's very distracting. Okay, so got rid of those. Added in some sky. Again, with that nice, um, in the original plate, just this great gradated um, sky, we can actually add all sorts of stuff on top very easily. So I just composited some uh, very simple clouds. Also extend the city here. Again, this is a demo, so it's not like I'm trying to do this very, very clean, but the, all the setup is the same, even if you're trying to do this a very tight, I make this into very tight um, painting. So this is a, a skyscape from somewhere else in Shanghai. This is actually part of the Shanghai uh, landscape, but I just got it from a different photograph, and I composite some of those things in. Because we are dealing with a film plate here, and we want to sell a story, and we want to sell that, that depth that you have in a typical uh, film. You know, Again, if you've watched other videos, you know what I'm talking about. So we have a nice background, some um, middle ground areas, and our main focus is going to be here, and then we have some um, close-up. Right? So you go from you know seeing a leaf that's very human scale, and you can look all the way out here, which is really far away. This, is sense, uh, in essence, creates a, a sense of 3D space for the human eye. Right? You're basically tricking the viewer to believe that this is in 3D. In, in, uh, in reality, it's actually just a 2D surface. Right? You're watching this on a TV, I mean, on a film screen. It's 2D, but you have to do all these little tricks to uh, trick the human eye to think that it is in 3D. So that's the photo play, and that's the extent of the uh, the background cleanup I did. That's it. You know, it's just cooled it down, uh, added some atmosphere fog, composite some of these buildings. And you can see even there's a big seam line here. But I think I didn't even care about this because robot blocks it. Uh, if I put it in, you see, he blocks pretty much the entire thing. So I didn't really clean up that much. Uh, again, this is a quicker tutorial. Uh, if this is for actual production, we'll definitely slow it down. Uh, instead of doing it this in an hour or two, we'll probably spend a whole day working on a painting like this, so we could get it very refined. So let's go back to robot number one and uh, expand these groups out so you can see what we started with. Okay, here's shadow. All right, so you can see some initial silhouettes that I did. I did this one here. I didn't actually like this design, so I nuked it, but I just saved it anyways. So I actually started with a robot that looks here, that looks uh, was located here, but I didn't like the design, so I started another one. This one seems a lot better. So again, just took a big brush, uh, layered in my silhouette, this way I have a way to mask my image, makes it a lot easier to um, paint. And also at this stage, uh, especially in the pre-production, very early pre-script uh, stage, the story is not super clear, but we definitely know the overall picture. So, you know, if this is a film about giant robots attacking the city, we know that, okay, there's gonna be robots involved, there's gonna be, you know, action involved. What they actually look like is not the most important. You definitely want to make it look cool, but you don't want to spend you know five days trying to figure out what this robot looks like and then spend another two days painting it. It's too slow in production. You have to do everything at once in a production painting. So what we do is you just do a robot that looks kind of cool. You know, Later we could go back and refine his design, do all that. So a silhouette works really well in this case because we are not 100% focused on the design of the robot at this point. It's about the overall picture. Okay, so with that mask, it's very easy to add these details. So I just kind of threw in some plates, some uh, design elements here and there to kind of silhouette, uh, to try to pull his details out from the silhouette. 